Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So I am back today with another fall sewing project and this project was actually really quick and easy to put together. So I'm excited to take you through the process today. Today I will be making this adorable collar button front blouse with these super fun puffy elasticated long sleeves. And I just love how this came together. I think it's such a cute little simple top to pair with jeans and a really easy thing to wear. The fabric that I used for this project is from Joanne Fabrics and it is their cotton double gauze. I've never worked with double gauze. This was my first time using it, but I really love how it sewed up. And I think the rose color is absolutely perfect for fall. Now the overall design of this blouse is really simple. It's just a button front blouse with darts in the front. It's just plain in the back. And I altered the sleeves and collar. So you could base this off of really any button front blouse pattern. The pattern that I used is McCall's number 8180, but I did make a lot of alterations to both the sleeves and the collars. So I will show you how how I did that as I jump into the project. So let's go ahead and get started. So to get started making this blouse, I'm grabbing my beautiful rose-colored double gauze fabric from Joanne Fabrics. And then this pattern from McCall's Patterns, I will be editing this a little bit and just kind of making it up as I go along. So the first thing I'm going to do is alter the collar pattern to make it a little bit more like a Peter Pan collar. This is quite a large statement collar. So I'm just going to trace out the neck of the collar and then freehand more of a Peter Pan collar style shape. Now, if you are working with a pattern that does not already have a collar, Collar, you can just trace out the neckline of your top. Just make sure that you account for any seam allowances that will be used for the shoulder seams. So once I had that collar pattern created, I went ahead and cut out all of my pattern pieces from the double gauze. And I am using two yards of this fabric. It did shrink up quite a lot in the wash. So that's something to be aware of. Now, as I cut out the sleeve pattern piece, you'll see how I'm altering this to create more fullness at the bottom. I am just going to taper the sides down to create a wider bottom of the sleeve. And I'm also going to lengthen it about two inches. So here's a quick look at all of the pieces I will be using for this shirt. I have the shirt back and then front pieces. Then I also have the facing pieces for the front and back neck edges, the sleeves and the collar pieces. So I'm not using the cuff pieces or any of the ruffle pieces from this pattern. The first step to making this blouse is to pin and sew the darts. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer over the dart markings from my pattern to my blouse. This blouse just has two darts in the front of it, so it's pretty easy to put together. So the way I like to do this is to mark the point of the dart with a pin and mark the two legs of the darts with a little clip in the fabric. Then I can bring those little notches in the fabric together and just pin this towards that pin that I used to mark the point of the dart. This helps create a really nice taper and it's easy to sew together. So I'm just going to sew my darts down using a straight stitch. With my darts sewn in place, I've gone ahead and pressed those down, and then I'm going to go ahead and pin and sew my shoulder and side seams for the blouse. So I'm just placing the fabric together with the right sides together along both the shoulders and the sides of the shirt. And then I'm going to sew these down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and use my serger to finish the seams.
So next I'm going to move on to the collar. And since this fabric is so thick and textured, I decided not to use any interfacing on this project. If you're using a different kind of fabric, that might be very, very helpful. So I'm just going to pin my two collar pieces together with the right sides together and sew all the way around this outside edge. And with the collar pieces sewn together, I can turn this towards the right side and press this flat. So now it's time to pin the collar to the blouse. So I'm marking the center back on the blouse along with the center back on the collar. And this will allow me to make sure that everything is really evenly distributed as I pin the collar to the neck edge. So I'm just going to match up the raw edges here and pin the collar all the way around the neck edge. And then I will baste this in place using a long stitch. Now at this point in the sewing process, I started to realize I was not 100% happy with how my collar was looking. So I put the project away and came back the next morning, made some coffee and went ahead and took the collar back off of the neckline. And I decided to make the collar just a little bit smaller. I felt like it looked a little bit too wide. So I stitched the seam on the collar one more time and reattached it. And I was much happier with it the second time around. And once I got the collar reattached, I was ready to go ahead and make the facing. So the first thing to do here is to pin the shoulder seams on the facing. So I am attaching the front facing to the back facing at the shoulder seams, just matching the right sides together. And I'll sew these seams with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and use my serger to finish off the edge. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and run serging all the way around the outer edge of the facing that will be exposed on the inside of the shirt. So now I can attach the facing to the shirt. So to do this, I'm going to match this around the neckline with the right sides together. And I like to start by matching up the shoulder seams of the shirt to the shoulder seams of the facing so that I can make sure everything is nice and even. Then I'll just pin this all the way around and sew it down with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to use a serger to finish the edge of this just so that it's really easy to wash and won't unravel. And I'm also going to understitch as much as I can around the neckline and the front of the shirt.
So now let's move on and make these fun billowy sleeves. So the first thing I'm going to do here is match the side seams together with the right sides together and sew these seams in place. Now one thing to note about this shirt pattern, it does have a sleeve that is set in with no gathering, so it's a very smooth application at the top of the shoulder. So all of the volume is coming from the cuff in this particular design. You could make something that's a little bit more puffy and that would look really cute as well. While I'm at the serger, I'm going to go ahead and run serging all the way around the bottom of the sleeve, and then I'm ready to create a casing for my elastic. So I am turning the hem of the sleeve under about one inch here, and I'm just going to pin this in place. Normally I would press this down, but the fabric was just not behaving quite as I wanted it to, so I pinned it and sewed it and then pressed it down. I'm making sure to leave a gap here so that I can insert some elastic here in just a second, and then I'm going to top stitch all the way around this edge, leaving my gap. I cut a piece of elastic that will fit around my wrist and I'm going to go ahead and thread this into the casing using a safety pin. I'm going to overlap the ends of elastic onto each other, making sure that nothing is twisted in the cuff of the shirt. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew these together using zigzag stitches. I like to use a lot of zigzag stitches and a lot of back stitching to make sure that my elastic will not break or go anywhere. Now I'm just going to adjust that elastic into place and go ahead and top stitch this gap closed, matching my stitching with the original top stitching as best as I can. Now I'm ready to add the sleeves to the shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and match the sleeve into the armhole with the right sides together. I like to start at the side seams once again, just to make sure everything stays nice and even. And I found that this double gauze fabric was very forgiving for this style of sleeve. I found some fabrics are really difficult to set a sleeve in without any e-stitching or gathers, but this one was actually pretty easy to do. So I was happy with that. So now I'm just going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew the seam with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and use my serger to finish the edge. At this point I went ahead and tried the shirt on and I decided to trim off two inches of the length and then I was ready to hem the shirt. So the first thing I'm going to do is run serging all the way around the lower edge making sure that the facing is opened out. Then I'm going to fold the facing over the front of the shirt with the right sides together and just sew that down so that it gets the hem kind of started at the edges and creates really nice crisp corners. So now I'm ready to sew my hem, so I'm just folding the fabric up about a half of an inch here, pressing it in place and pinning it down, and then I'm just going to top stitch all the way around the bottom of the shirt. I was really trying to get away with a small amount of bobbin thread here, but of course I ran out right when I got to the hem of the shirt and had to re-thread one. Don't you love it when that happens? So the last step to making the shirt is doing the buttons and buttonholes, and I found these adorable tiny pink buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the placement for all my buttonholes on the front of the shirt. And then I'm just going to stitch my buttonholes using my sewing machine and sew all the buttons on by hand.
And with the button stitched in place, this shirt was done. And I am so happy with how it turned out. I absolutely love this color for the fall season. I love that it's pink, but it reads a little bit more autumnal than a brighter pink. And I just think it's so, so lovely. So I'm really looking forward to wearing this. love how this blouse came together and I think it is going to be the perfect thing to wear in the fall season. A really great everyday piece to have in my wardrobe to pair with jeans and just make them look a little bit cuter. So I'm very excited about it and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how this project came together. Thank you so much for watching and spending your time here on my channel today. If you are new around here and would like to keep up with my future sewing projects, you can go ahead and subscribe by clicking the red button down below. That will just allow you to stay tuned for my future videos. And we recently hit 30,000 subscribers subscribers, which absolutely blows my mind. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. It really means a lot to me and I really, really appreciate it. And if you'd like to keep up with me outside of YouTube, TikTok and Instagram are the two best places to do that. So both of those will be linked down below, but that is it for me today. I hope you guys all have a great weekend and I will talk to you soon. Bye.